So this session will talk about the second role that we fulfill, that we all uh, step into in our lives as priest, as prophet. We listen to God, we speak for God, and we reveal God to, uh, to people. Right? So, and you do this for yourself, your family, your workplace, wherever. Listen to God, speak for God. Right? Second role that we're talking about is that of priest. So I'm on page five. You could uh, look at that with me. So what do you do? As a priest, you're going to teach God's truth. You're going to intercede before God, and you're going to reconcile people to God. So you're going to teach, you're going to intercede, and you're going to reconcile or bring people back. You're connecting people back to God. Right? That means your presence is the drawing force. You know, Jesus said, I will draw all men to me. So they, you know, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. But how is that? It's going to be through you and me as his priests. Right? Through us, he's drawing, drawing people unto himself. Right? That's one of the very important ways. We are his hands, his feet, his church. So as a priest, uh, four, four uh, functions of four things we do. We share, or you could use more, you, know, you could use the word teach or share God's word. You pray God's word. Also, as a priest, you are watching. You're a, in the spirit as a priest. You, know, you, you watch and pray. So you're, 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 you're a guardian. You're observing. But you're being aware of things in the spirit. Spiritual things. Right? So you watch in the spirit. And then you model the life of a believer. So you think about these things. You're sharing the word. You're teaching the word. You're bringing God's word. You're praying God's word. You're watching in the spirit. And you're also modeling the life of the believer. So as you're a priest. Now, as a personal application for yourself. As a priest, it's so important for you personally to know the word of God. Right? So, uh, you know, I was just having, having a, a little tea break conversation. And this is so important for all of us. Right? As a priest, you are, I, I, you could use the word, a student of the word. Or you're just committed to knowing the truth of God's word as a priest. Right? And so you take the time. So this is something nobody else can do for you. <laughs> Nobody else can do for you. So you take the time as a priest for your own self. Right? You are studying the word. You are establishing yourself. You are establishing your life on God's word. And, and it's so amazing that as we spend time in God's word, he's going to speak to us. He's going to speak the truth that you and I need to hear at that moment. But then we need to put ourselves in that place. God, I've come. I'm sitting here. I've opened my Bible, please speak to me. Right? And as a priest, you're going to learn for yourself. Right? Of course, you're going to share that with others, but first you have to learn it for yourself. So you are a priest, you're coming to God, and you're putting yourself in a place. Lord, I am your priest, I need to know the truth. I need to know the word of God. So teach me your word. Right? So you study or you learn God's word. Right? Now, in today's world, you know, it is very difficult because uh, there are, there, there's so much out there. You know, even from a perspective of learning God's word, it's like mind-boggling. So much online, it's so much on the phone, you know, there are so many, Christ I'm talking about Christian content. It's like you, you, we don't even know where to start. So I want to encourage you, just simplify it. Keep it simple. Open your Bible. <laughs> Keep it simple. Because otherwise you don't know which app to download, which website to go, which preacher to listen to. 
Because you think about it, on a Sunday, how many thousands of sermons get uploaded to the internet? Literally. Churches all over the world. And almost, you know, any urban church uh, is involved in digital content. You know, they'll be on YouTube. They may have even be Facebook. They'll, they'll have their MP3. Set. So every Sunday, every Sunday, think about it. We're like hundreds of thousands of sermons coming online. It's impossible for us to go and consume all that content. And we could get so confused. So what, in the end what happens, we don't listen to anybody. <laughs> we don't listen to anything, forget it. We kind of just, I, I don't know who to listen to. I don't know what to, where do I start? So we just leave the whole thing. So I want to just encourage you and me. Keep it very simple. Open your Bible. Right. Now, if you have spare time, yeah, of course, you know, you select whoever the preachers you want to listen to, and you listen to them, that is fine. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you open it. So that's why I still purposely carry a big Bible. I want to make a point. <laughs> it's like purposely carry this big one, right? Because I want to make a point that you still have to read this Bible. You know, like, hey, open your Bible. Keep it simple. Open your Bible. Read it. Underline it. Mark it. Write some notes on the side, whatever, you know. Uh, and uh, flip the pages for the Bible. Keep it simple. Because if you and I don't read our Bibles, then that, that being a priest over your own life and for those whom God has made you responsible is going to be difficult to perform. So it starts with you and me, knowing the truth, knowing the Word of God. Because only then... When you study the word, you receive the word yourself, you're able to bring it out for other people. So keep it simple. Read your Bible. In addition to that, what you want to do is your choice. You know, you want to listen. You have some favorite preachers. You listen. Fine. If you have the time, fine. You know, and nowadays, with all the podcasts and things like that, you can listen while you're driving, you're traveling to work, this and that. All that is fine. But don't neglect the simplicity of opening your own Bible and reading it for yourself. Don't neglect that. Keep it that way. So as a priest, you study, you learn the word of God, and then you pray God's words over your life. You watch in the spirit, and you model the life of a believer. You see, part of being a priest is praying, but it's also watchful prayer. So you're a priest over your own life. So watch over your own life. Watch over your own life. Okay, so be, I think I have to put this, you, know, you, you be on guard because there's an enemy coming. There's an enemy. He's watching. He's waiting for an opportunity to devour. So as a priest, you're going to pray, but you've got to watch and pray. Like Jesus said, right? When you pray, he said, pray, lead us not into temptation. Lead me not into temptation. The devil is there, his job is to tempt. But we are praying, God, I don't want to go in those places where there is temptation. I want to preempt that. I want to stop that. And so for your own life, be a priest over your own life. You be watchful, pray. So what does that mean? That means... You're on guard. You're saying, how can, the, what is the enemy trying to do? What is he, what could he attempt to do? You're thinking like that. You're thinking like a strategist. What could the enemy do? Or what is he trying to do? You're watching over your own life and you're praying. So you would prevent things from happening even before the enemy can begin to do it. So as a, you know, say example, in your workplace, something, uh, you, you're working, you're a married person, or maybe a young person, whatever. Let's say you're a married man, you're working at the workplace, and some lady gets attracted to you. Now, this doesn't happen, right? No, it does. 
So you're, you're in the workplace. You're married. You're a family at home. But there's a lady on the other desk. She's young, pretty, single. And you are young, handsome, <laughs> whatever. And she gets attracted to you. So she purposely sends you three emails every day. <laughs> it has nothing to do with work, but hello, how are you? <laughs> three emails are coming. You are a priest. Watch. Keep your eyes open. Hey, something is happening here. I don't just fall into it. Oh, so I, I'm getting attention which I don't get at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't fall for these things. Got to watch. See, we talk real things here, right? We're real men. Right? So I'm just saying, you're, you're a priest over your own life. Something like this is happening. You have to be alert. Hey, I have to watch. Because if I'm not careful, the enemy can use somebody else's weakness to ruin my life. See, you are going there to work. You're just minding your own business. You're doing your work. That lady is interested in you. It's her weakness, not your weakness. But her weakness, if you are not watchful, can ruin your life. Guess what? You just pull, get pulled into it. But you're a priest. You're watching. Hey, some, this is not normal. It's not, I, watch, pray. So in the name of Jesus, you know, you, you go to pray, God, I see this happening. Give me wisdom. How do I handle this? How do I deal with this? You know, this is a workplace colleague. You can't go and suddenly talk something. and all that, you know, But it's a real situation. It's happening. As it begins to happen, you start praying. God, I need wisdom. I don't want to fall into this. Uh, I can see it coming. How do I handle it? You know, and God will give you wisdom. I, I, I can't give, say, you know, there's a uniform answer. But the best answer is have your defense up. And protect yourself in that situation. Don't open yourself. Don't make yourself vulnerable. You know, you can't, you, you may not, you're not the manager, so you can't dismiss that person or send that person to another team. You, know, you, you cannot have that. You may have to be there in that place and that person is over there. But protect yourself. You're watching and praying. So you're being a priest over your own life. Nobody else will know that. You've got to watch and pray. So just a simple example. I like this, what we have to do. As priests, we are mindful. We're in the spirit. What can the enemy do to knock me out? Yeah. It could be sometimes in the area of finances. Be very careful. Even in the area of finances. You know, you're, you're, I'm talking about personal finances. You're, you're, you're dealing with things. Careful. God, I don't want the enemy to do anything to trap me in these things. So even there, we are being watchful, careful. You know, when you're, when, you're, you're, when you're doing things with your money, whatever you're doing, be very careful. Right? So in every area, over your own life, you're a priest. You're watching. You have the Word of God. You're learning the Word of God. But you're watching and praying. And, uh, of course, you live as a believer. Now, the same thing you extend. And you pray over your wife. For your wife and your children and your home. You're watchful. Now, as a young man, suppose you're a single person, you're a priest, you're not married, you start praying ahead of time for your wife, your future spouse, your, you know, God for the home that you're going to establish. You start praying. You know, you sow in the spirit. So just like how you can sow in the natural and you reap in the future, in the natural, you sow, time passes and you reap. Same thing you can do as a young single person for your wife, children, home. You pray ahead of time and you sow in prayer into those things. You're being a priest. right? And if you sow in the spirit, you'll reap from the spirit. So you do that as a young person. Some of you are single, not yet married. It's okay. Start praying ahead of time. 
pray into your future. Pray into what is going to happen. Right? So as a prophet, you listen. As a priest, you pray over those things you are listening from God about. So for example, I knew, and again, this is a personal life example. I knew that one day when we were living in the U.S., we are going to move back to India, start a church, do the ministry. But those years in the U.S. were also time spent praying ahead for the work we were going to do here, even before we moved. So pray. You can sow into your future through your prayer. So I could say, while we were living there, we're already praying ahead of time. Or if we didn't, that time we didn't know exactly, you know, when, what year we are going to move. We know this is going to happen, but you start praying ahead. You're sowing into your future. Same thing in your own life, whether it's family or it could be other things. You, God has spoken as a prophet. You've heard from God for your own life. Now you start praying that, praying into it ahead of time. We don't know, you may not know exactly when, but you're already sown into it in prayer. And what you've sown in the Spirit, you will reap from the Holy Spirit. It will always be good. Amen? So as a prophet, you're listening. As a priest, you're praying. But you're also watching and praying for your own life, for your wife, for your children. Now I remember once um, Amy and I were having a conversation. We were just talking about something. And suddenly, you know, something went wrong. We were just talking, something went wrong. And at that moment, now I'm not saying this happens every time, but I'm just saying, at that moment, when the conversation went wrong, I stopped, and then, okay, we, we went to work. But then, at that m after the conversation stopped, God said, you got to deal with it in the spirit. The reason this has gone wrong is because there's some you got to deal with it in the spirit. So I mean, took I took authority, right? So you're listening to God, but you're being a priest over your family. And I've done the same thing for the children as well. We'll talk about it, but for your wife, whatever has disturbed her. Is something you have to deal with it in the spirit. I'm not saying everything. So don't blame every problem as something in the spirit. No. But there are times when God tells you. You've got to deal with this problem in the spirit. It's, it's an idea that was sown. But it's coming from a wrong source. So you've got to deal with it in the spirit. And so I did that. During the course of the day. I said in the name of Jesus. I take authority over that. Dis distracting, disturbing thought, this idea, right? So the Bible tells us the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing you know, uh, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So you've, we've got those weapons to deal with those thoughts that have been interjected. So you see how the enemy works, right? You're having a conversation, suddenly some things go wrong, but what has happened is an idea, a thought has been interjected, which is disturbing the peace. So we stopped, we went away, but then I dealt with that. I said, I'm taking authority over it. And sure enough, when the end of the day came, it was just like total change. That idea was discarded, gone, peace restored. Okay. So as a prophet, you're listening, but as a priest, you're praying and you're watching, you're watching and praying things in the spirit. You're guarding your spouse and your children. So I want to impress on us to today that as a priest, you have to study the word of God. And you also you have to guard what, is, what God has entrusted to you. Right? As a married person, your wife, your children, your home, you guard in the spirit. You know, same thing over your children. There have been times when, you know, sometimes 
kid, the, you know, of course now they're grown, they've gone to college, but I'm talking about when they were growing up. They would wake up and say, I had this dream. This and this happened. I remember now once, one day, Ruth woke up. She said, I had this strange dream. What, what happened, Ruth? What, what was the dream? She said, I saw a big, you know, big, uh, like a dinosaur trying to break in through the front door. And, you know, things attacking the home. And it was like a, such a vivid dream that she described. And it was a clear indication that this was the enemy trying to attack. So you pay attention to that. And then you're the priest. You're going to guard your home. So you're going to go and pray. You take authority and say, in Jesus' name, I am standing here as a prophet, priest, and king. I stand guard over my home. I take authority over every scheme of the enemy that is trying to in interfere, trying to come in, trying to disturb I bind those things. My, I protect my home. And you speak the word of God over your home. You declare no evil shall befall this home. No plague will come near this dwelling. God is a wall of fire round about my home. Right? So sometimes God can even use that to alert you. Hey, take action in the spirit. As a priest, you have to do that. Are you listening? Right? So I want to really impress this on our hearts. See, man, this is our responsibility at home. For our family, for wife and children. And, uh, it's our responsibility. Right? So do that. Now, I know that we're all very busy. The big question is, where can I find time to do this? Pastor, nice to hear you say amen and all. <laughs> but how can I do it? Practically, where's the time? Right. Two simple things. One is just flow with this. In your day-to-day -day life, as and when the Lord is bringing things to your attention, do it. You may be driving in the car. It can, that can be a time for you to deal with things in the spirit. Say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority. You're driving. You're driving. It's focus. <laughs> but you also are dealing with things in the spirit. You can pray in tongues. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the situation you know, at home or over my children or whatever you're dealing with. And you take authority. So just make it a part of your daily flow. That's one simple way. Because we are busy. We, we all have things to do here and there. So in your normal course, in the normal course of your day, exercise your authority. Speak over your family. Be a priest. Pray over your children or you know, whatever God is saying. Just, just flow in it. it. You don't always have to have a separated time. That is important. But you're still a priest when you're driving in the car. You're still a priest when you are walking on the street. You could do it from wherever you are. So that's one simple thing. Make it just, just flow in it. And secondly, take time. Intentionally, you make time. Right? So in the course of a week or in the course of a month, you say, you know, hey, I'm going to take this, this Saturday afternoon. I'm going to keep it aside. I'm going to go and pray for my family or for the matters that concern you. Take an hour out, two hours, whatever time you can afford. But you go and you pray intentionally. Now, I'm not saying every day then, because that practically won't happen. But I'm saying even in a week or in a month, you intentionally take time out to go and pray. Now here's the thing. Like we said in our earlier session, there is a promise that God would bless your home, your family, your marriage, your wife, your children. The promise is there. But to press into it, to get into it, you have to go through the process. And part of that process is being a priest, is praying into those things. I want to challenge you to do that. There is no shortcut. 
No shortcut, sorry. You have, you have to pray. Right? So, and you take the time, intentionally. Like, I'm going to take this one hour, I'm going to go and pray for my family. I'm going to pray for my children. Or I'm going to pray for this and this in my life. Or I'm going to pray into my future. Or I'm going to pray into this purpose for my life. Or I'm going to pray into this destiny for my life. I'm going to do it. You take that hour, you go and you pray. I understand that. There's no shortcut. So sometimes, I have to tell you, when 20, 2011 was a very difficult year in my family, as a family. I took four months off from preaching. So Pastor Jacob, I knows. I had only revealed that to the pastoral team. I, uh, I said, things are very difficult. Um, and I think I only preached on Easter Sunday that year. Uh, but the months before that, we always had guest speakers. I don't know if people understood why. I, didn't, I mean, people were wondering why every Sunday there's a guest speaker. It was because that those months, early 2011, yeah, uh, I was going through a very difficult time, so I took a break from ministry. Meaning, I was there in church, I would be there in church, but I was not ministering on Sundays. Uh, I requested the pastoral team, please take care of things. We will invite a guest speaker uh, every, almost every Sunday. But during that time, things are so difficult. When things are difficult, you have to pray even more. When things are difficult, that's not the time to give up and say, God, forget you, God. <laughs> that's the time to pray more. And I remember that season. It was a very difficult season. I took a break from preaching on Sundays. I, I, I only preached that Easter Sunday. Uh, but I would go and I would pray for eight hours straight only for my family because we were having struggles, we were having difficulties. I said, God, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to pray. So I would be in my bedroom. I would pray eight hours, pray in tongues for my family because we were going through a difficult time. But God is so good. He brought us through. But you have to pray. Are you understanding? So you are a priest. You need to know the word of God. But you also need to watch God in the spirit and engage in now, for some of us, you know, praying it may be something very difficult. That's why God has given to us the ability to pray in tongues. So I encourage you, do it. I, I don't think I would have been able to pray in English for that, especially in that difficult season, because emotionally it was out. Emotionally it was draining. Uh, things were so difficult in the family. But I said, God, I don't have any feelings right now, but I know what I need to do is to pray. I'm just going to pray in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit worry about the words. <laughs> I will make myself available. Do I want to pray? Am I passionate about prayer? Or you know, do I have some great spiritual feeling? No. It's a very difficult season, but I'm going to pray because I know that if the Holy Spirit prays through me, He will take care of the situation. He knows what to pray. He knows how to pray. I just have to make myself available. I have to be there. I have to pray. He can give the words. He can know what to pray for. He can know how to sort things out. He knows that wisdom is with Him. I don't have that wisdom. But one thing I can do, I can be here and pray. Amen? So I remember some evenings, I just, 
and I'm not very good at night, but situation so God, I'm going to pray. Just spent eight hours praying, but we came through. And as a priest, that's part of what you should do. Amen? So, you take the word of God, and you contend. So now, I'm contending for my children. I said, Josh and Ruth are young adults, and uh, of course, they're going through their journey, their spiritual journey. Of course, you wanted them to do well professionally. You want them to, uh, you know, uh, uh, be established, all of those things. And at the same time, you want them to follow the purposes of God. You want them to serve the purpose of God. So that's what I'm contending for. Same thing. Take the word of God. You declare the word of God over your children. So that's what I do. So I start from Genesis, go through the scriptures. Hey, say, God, you know, you have a covenant with me. And you said, Genesis 17, 7, you will establish your covenant with my children in their generation. So God, you establish your covenant with my children. Right? So I go through the scriptures, declaring, praying the word of God over my children. I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Pray the word of God over your children. Intercede. See, victory is guaranteed. God's promises will not fail. But you have to press in through your praying. You have to go through the process. You have to make the journey. So you have to press in through your praying into the promise of God. So I go before God. Lord, you said in your word. That my children, they will possess the gate of their enemies. That means they will have authority over enemies they face in their lives. So declare that over them. God, you said in your word, you will circumcise. This is Exodus 30, verse 6. You will circumcise my heart and the heart of my children to love you and to honor you. God, I thank you. You're doing that. Joshua 24. God, as for me and my house, you will, we will serve the Lord. So then you go into the Psalms. God, that my children, they are blessed. Right? My children are mighty on the earth. Right? My children, Psalm 127, he said, your children, are the fruit of the womb is a reward. So what does a reward do? It brings you joy. It brings you honor. Right? So when you get a reward... You're not ashamed of the reward. You go proudly stand on the sta stage and get your reward. So he says, children are a reward from the Lord. So you begin to engage. Lord, my children are a reward. They bring me joy and honor. Children are like arrows. So I say, I declare Joshua and Ruth, they have been aimed and released to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. Because they're arrows. Are you listening? And I'm, I'm sharing these things because these are things I'm doing. And I want to encourage you to do as, you know, fathers, husbands, as men in your families. God, my children like arrows. They've been aimed and released to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. It says, your children will not be ashamed. So I say, God, my children are honored. They turn their enemies back in the gate. Amen? So like this, you take the scripture. And Isaiah has many scriptures Promises for your children. Say, God, my children are taught by the Lord. They have great peace. God pours His Spirit upon my seed. His blessing upon my offspring. Right? So you declare and you pray the word of God for your spouse. You pray the word of God for your children. Right? Now, You can pray the word of God or speak God's word for your wife. I, I mentioned this earlier. You begin to say, she opens her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. This is Proverbs 31. So many men expect their wives to be born as a Proverbs 31 <laughs> woman. <laughs> as when you're walking down the altar, you're walking with the Proverbs 31. No, 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 no. Who she is, is influenced by your presence. Right? You help her. So you declare God's word. You know, Ephesians 5 talks about the Lord. He washes his church with the washing of the water by the word. 
So you, as a priest, in the same way, you, you speak the word of God and you minister the word of God over your wife. Let it do its work. And I remember going back to those times when, you know, when Amy had just started work in Baptist. I would speak Proverbs 31, that last verse there. You know, her own works praise her in the gates. And she is known among the elders of the land. So if you want, uh, I, I just paraphrased it. Uh, I'll read you the exact uh, verse there, Proverbs 31. Right? So here you are, you're interceding for your wife. Proverbs 31. Uh, you know, Proverbs 31, verse 31. Give her the fruit of her hands. Let her own works praise her in the gates. Her own works. That means what she does, she will be known for those things. Now, when she started working, that time she was so scared. But what was I doing? I was saying, you know, God will bless her. Her own works will praise her in the gates. Today, people come and say, oh, you're Amy's husband, no? <laughs> say, yes, yes, I'm Amy's husband. Her own works have brought her reputation and things. But it was not so then. Those times, I was calling it forth. Those times, I was praying it forth as a priest. So her own works will praise her in the gates. My children will arise up and call her blessed husband also. And he praises her. That's verse 28. Right? So as a priest over your wife, you're praying the scriptures over her. You're, you're, you're declaring the scriptures over her. Same thing for your children. I, and I'm, I'm into, in, in jumping between these things. But you're a priest over your own life. You're a priest over your wife. You're a priest over your children. And you engage in prayer. You engage in, in intercession uh, for them uh, uh, as, as a priest. So as a priest... You're praying, you, you've got to be able to teach the Word of God, and you, you've got to be able to um, pray, and you also model the life of the believer. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the teaching, the sharing part, and then I will also talk about the modeling, the life part. You see, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, let's turn there, it's, it's, it's a very nice passage. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Go, this is what God told his people. I think I put the scriptures down, but all of these scriptures will be in the church app. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, God says, verses, I'm reading verses 5, 6, and 7. Deuteronomy 6, verses 5, 6, and 7. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So this is verse 7. He says, so verse 6, these words will be in your heart. So as a priest, you put the word of God into your then what do you do? Verse 7. Teach them diligently to your children. Talk of them when you sit, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. In other words, anytime, any opportunity you get, share it. Now, I want to encourage all of us, especially in nurturing children, just make the sharing of the word, let it happen naturally. So, you know, you're going out. I remember the you know, times when we'd be driving in the car and something would happen. And we would use that moment just to share the truth. What does the word of God say? Just bring it out. Very natural. You know, it's not, hey, Chapter was this, you know, this, 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 just bring very natural. You know, if, if, you, if you make it very hard, they sometimes will resent it. But when you make it natural, you know, like you're applying, you've seen a situation, 
apply it to that. So God says, when you sit down, when you walk, you just talk about it, about the word of God. So as a priest in your home, just talk about the word. And try to have conversations, even with your wife or your spouse, with your wife or children. Very natural conversation. I learned this. So today, when you go home, I'm sure those of you married, wife will ask, what did pastor say? <laughs> <laughs> I am sure. <laughs> Normal question. <laughs> One thing you can do is you can give the notes. <laughs> yeah, read it. <laughs> or... You can use it as a very interesting moment for conversation. You know, and, and to just take you and your wife closer to each other and further in what you want to see happen in your home. Use that as a moment. She asked you a question, you know, what did you, what did Pastor say? What did you learn today? What happened? Something like that. Okay. You know, I think, you know, this is what I learned. And you, 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 you share it in such a way that will help build things better in your home. I think we must spend more time, you know, we should just uh, pray together more or we should, you know, pray over our children or whatever. You know, you say it in a way that will, rather than saying, yeah, he said a lot of things I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you know, use that moment to your advantage. So same thing. Teach them, but talk of it very naturally. When you sit down in a restaurant, you find something happening. You talk about it. Now, you see, we are living in a very difficult world. Very difficult. Especially in the urban centers. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're in a small town or in a village, maybe you know, children are not exposed to these things. But in, a, in, in the urban setting, we are in a very complex world. And I learned, you know, after Joshua and Ruth went to America, they said, I don't want to go to church. Why? They're talking politics in church. It's like, you, you, you don't see that happen in India. But there, it's like, I don't want. The moment the pastor stands up and tells you, vote for this party and that party, like, I don't want to go here. So it's a very difficult world. And then there are so many uh, challenges. You know, so you work in a company. Uh, almost every company has you know, an inclusive policy. You've got to welcome everybody, LGBTQ, ABC. <laughs> welcome everybody. Children have to process these things. I'm talking, you know, when they come you know, over 20, 20 plus, and they are exposed to these things, they have to process. Okay, so what is all this happening around me? Right? Uh, and sometimes uh, I think these days that m these problems might, you know, start much earlier. You know, maybe even in school, or maybe in college. Children have to struggle with, like, hey, some, uh, maybe a school kid comes and I'm gay. I mean, in our days, <laughs> you know, that we, we didn't know he said things like that. But now, school-going children have to, are confronted with these things. It's like, what do you do? I mean, do I be his, I don't know what to call him, him or her, <laughs> and do I be his friend or her friend? What do I do? Should I sit next to that person or not? Do I talk to that person or not? Yeah. Where will they get the answers? Now, of course, as a church, you know, uh, we can have youth ministry, we can have teen church, we can, and we can have these things where we try to address. But the best thing is if you as a parent can address these issues. You're a priest. You have to bring the truth. Children have to know. Right? What about, you know, this whole sexual identity thing going on. How, what should I do about it? And then all these other problems that, that are there. I, I mean, uh, uh, they're exposed to it. They have to face up to it. What do we do? Okay, have conversation. Talk of them. This is what God did. 
you know, and in a very loving way, not in a, you know, hammer on the head kind of thing, but in a loving way, have a conversation. See, this is what we believe. So, we used to do that. Say, you know, Joshua Ruth, see, um, when we're talking about marriage, you want to see, we have to help children understand the sanctity of marriage. Because the world they are, is, no, nobody cares. Marriage is just a social thing. You you like, you, you just start, but no. So how do you teach? So have a conversation. Josh and Ruth say, uh, you focus on your studies. A time will come when you have to get married. This is how you go about it. You know, you pray. It's your choice, of course. But then, choose a person like this. Right? We're not putting it down as the 11th commandment. We're just sharing. This is how you do it. What are you doing? You're being a priest in your house. You're talking of the truth in a way and in the matters that are affecting our children today. Now, my daughter Ruth, she's got into genetics. So I started reading up on genetics because that's a big space. There's a lot of confusion. I mean, technology is advancing, but at the same time, you know, we have technology where we can edit the gene. I can change you, or not I, but <laughs> using, you know, the technology we have. We can edit the gene. I mean, we can use it for good things, I mean, to try and cure illnesses, or we can use it to self-destruct Yeah, so it's, but it's a, it's a valid professional space, you know, and there are good things. Many of the fruits and vegetables we're eating have, they've, they've been edited, the gene has been edited. And so big apple, small apple, this, all that, technology is at work and we don't even realize it. We consume all, all of these things, even the paints we use and all that. They, they're using this technology in so many spaces, so many areas, we don't realize it. But then... There are a lot of ethical issues. Which I was thinking, okay, she's going into that space. But somebody has to have a conversation. Talk about this. What can you do? What can you not do? We don't have the answers. But at least we can say, you know, certain things to honor God in, in what we do and so on. But the point I'm making is this. See, as a priest... You have to bring the truth of God to your family. Talk about them. Share uh, with them. You know. So, very naturally, teach the word or share. I use the word, share the word with your family. With your spouse. You know, in the morning, if you're sitting and having tea, just share. What did you learn? You don't have to preach a big sermon. Just share. What did you learn? What is God speaking to your heart? Talk about it to your spouse. The sad thing is, first of all, in many Christian homes, husband and wife don't even talk to each other. They're so busy. Life is so busy. We're right? tuck, 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 tuck. We're going. No time to pause and have a conversation. Where are you going to talk the Bible? So, make the time. Keep it simple. Just talk what God is speaking to you. What did you learn? Have that conversation at home as a priest. And lastly, model the life of a believer. As a priest, take it on yourself to model the life of a believer. So, you know, it's so important that your wife and your children 
or you take this anywhere else, to your workplace, they need to see the truth of God embodied in your life as a priest. Model the life of Jesus to your family, spouse, and children. Be like Jesus to them. Let them see Jesus in you. Yeah. Let them see love coming through your life towards them. Let them see forgiveness. Let them see patience. Let them see these things modeled in your life and mine, in the house, in the family, as a priest. Are you with me so far? Yeah. And you can do this as, as a fun thing, as fun things. You know, uh, recently, uh, my daughter Ruth, she moved. She had to move from one city to another. And so I went, again, just mainly to help her relocate. And then when she went to this new house, or new, this, this room that she was going to stay in, we ordered IKEA furniture. So some of you know IKEA furniture. Right? <laughs> it just comes in. You have to assemble it. So everything in her room were things we had to sit and assemble. So right from the bed to the desk and chair and all. So we ordered, and we sat and did those things. We, she and I, we sat and we assembled, you know, piece by piece. Uh, you know, the point was this. She needs to know her daddy loves her. She needs to know her daddy is willing to be invested in her life. And we'll talk more about this in the next session as we talk about being kings in the house. That her daddy is invested in her life. He will do this for her. So we sat over three days fixing furniture piece by piece. Fixing. But these are memories you create. Now, Amy's always good at photos. She'll tell you, take photo, take photo, take photo. <laughs> I don't think about those things. But, but I think even more than the photos, the experience of, you know, of building this furniture with her father will stay. And that will teach her, you know, hey, this is what I, I can do. I can be to somebody else. So the point is this. As a priest, model Jesus to your children. Amen? So think about what you can do to be like Jesus for your wife or your children. I close with this thought. See, sometimes we think the time we spent with our family or in being a priest, that is not as important as me going and winning the lost. So imagine if I had a, I just, I'm just drawing a, this is just a picture to contrast. I'm standing on a pulpit, I'm standing here, I'm talking to, you know, all these people in a meeting. Or I'm sitting in the living room having a conversation with my wife and child, or wife and children. Which is more glamorous? The first one. Hmm? Standing here, talking to people, all those things. More glamorous. Yeah, yeah. That thing sitting in the living room, Wife and children, it's like, hmm, when, when, will, when will it get over? <laughs> How much time they want? I'll buy them a TV. <laughs> or whatever, you know. We don't see that as being important. I want to leave you with this thought. When you are sitting and having a simple conversation with your wife and your children, you are doing ministry. Before God, you are doing ministry as important or maybe even more important than standing here and speaking to this audience. Think about it. Because 
that is your first ministry. That is first. Take care. He, you know, if you read Ephesians 5, say, you, you, husbands, love your wives. Nourish, cherish. That's your first ministry. This comes next, the house of God. Second, Paul made it very clear. You know, take care of your own house, then take care of the house of God. Very clear. So that is your first ministry. That is even more important than this ministry. I'm not saying this is not important. This is important, but that is more important. So in our minds, we think being a priest in my house, why, what, how important is it? I want you to just leave this thing. Being a priest in your house is your first ministry. More important than public ministry. You're doing things outside. Amen? So, we talked about being a prophet. You listen from God, speak to God, reveal God. We talked about being a priest. You pray, you watch and pray. You teach, you study God's word, you teach God's word. You watch and pray over your family. And you model Jesus to your family. I didn't spend much time on that, but I hope, you know, they need to see you are the priest. You are representing God, revealing God, representing God to the family. And through your life, they are going to be reconciled to God. When they see unconditional love, where will they see it? Through you. Forgiveness, where will they see it? Through you. Patience, where will they see it? Through you. Where else can they see it? They say God is patient, but they see it in you. You are reconciling people your own family, people in your workplace, to God. Okay? Now, these same thoughts, I want us to extend it to other things, like the workplace and all that. Okay? I'm foca focusing a lot on the home because that's an immediate setting, but take these things even to your workplace where you're interacting with people in the world. Ask God, how do I be a prophet in my workplace? How do I be a prophet or, or a priest in my workplace? God will give you those ideas. Right? Basically, same things. Take it to your workplace or your sphere of influence. I spend most of my time just addressing the home, but everything ex extended to all spheres of activity. Amen? Prophet, priest, after lunch, we'll have one session on. Okay. Okay. So, I think it's time for lunch. We're going to, let's take a few moments to pray, please. And again, uh, uh, if you just, somebody could join, please help us with the music. I want you to pray and say, God, help me to be a priest. Help me to be a priest. You see, sometimes, we have to contend <clears throat> in prayer. Some things are not easy. They don't come easy. We have to contend in prayer. But you are the priest who is going to pray for your family, for your children. God is faithful. He will come through. But he needs somebody in prayer. Amen? So let's stand to our feet. Take a few moments and ask God. Say, God, Help me to be a priest in my family, <clears throat> to my family, and to the workplace. Be a priest over your own life. That's, also, that's something we also said. So put the word of God in your heart. Pray over the purposes of God for your life. Be a priest in your own family. Take a few moments. Ask God, God, give me grace to fulfill this role as a priest, to fulfill this role. Father, even as we stand here, God, and as we pray, God, I've just tried to express, Lord, this, this burden for us, this call for us, God, to be prophet, to be priest in our lives. God, please take whatever has been shared and Please help each one of us. Please help us, Lord.
Give us the grace to be priests for our families, our homes, our, our wife and children. Give us the, the grace to be priests over our own life. Pray for all the single men here. God, as they look into their future, God, teach them how to pray for their future. Things yet to come, Lord, things way up in the future. Teach them how to pray. To pray for their future wife and children and home that they will establish. Teach them how to pray. God, for those of us who are married and have homes and families, and teach us, Lord, how to be priests for our loved ones, for the people you've entrusted to us. We know there is victory. We know you will fulfill your promise. We know we will see the promises of God fulfilled, but help us journey through the process. Help us pray as priests should pray. Give us the wisdom to take the truth and apply it into the lives, into the situations that our people are facing. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. May the grace of your Spirit empower each of us to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Help us, help us. Help us to pray as we should, God, because we know victory is ours. We just have to be there in prayer. We know good things will happen, but we just have to pray. And thank you so much for the empowering of the Holy Spirit that we could pray in the Spirit. What a great helper. Oh, God, what a great helper. When we don't know what to pray, when we don't know how to pray, He helps us and He brings us through. What a wonderful privilege. What a wonderful privilege. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you. We bless you. Father, we pray that each of our lives, our homes, our families will be blessed, will be beautiful the way you want it to be. And as priests, help us to do our part. As prophets, help us to do our part. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.